well, hundreds of miles north and west in Kiev. Matt Fry. Well, here on Independence Square in Kiev, the atmosphere is the calmest it's been all week long. In fact, on the stage behind me, instead of the usual firebrand speeches, we have a little bit of revolutionary and nationalist news act to calm the nerves. All the political activity is inside Parliament, where I spent much of the day. The undeniable romance of the barricades, hard to shake off for some, understandably. But Ukraine's revolution remains unfinished, a drama looking for a suitable ending. While the country waits another day for a new government, the vacuum is filled with ideas whose time usually never comes. Every small party is using the political free-for-all to give anything a try. He wants more rights for Cossacks. She wants a guaranteed pension. The woman in the mink doesn't want too much to change at all. The patrols are still marching through the streets deprived of their cobblestones. There is unease in the air that the same rich people who've always run this country will end up running it again. On Maidan, they passed a resolution today that none of the 100 richest people in Ukraine should be allowed anywhere near the government. A backlash against the grotesque opulence of the fugitive former president. But that would rule out many of the people now vying for high office including our old friend, the so-called Chocolate King. I just talked to someone on the new barricade outside Parliament wow. and he said to me, I'm sick and tired of oligarchs running my country. That's, they are absolutely right. You're an oligarch. I know. That's... Can you imagine the oligarch who's standing under the bullet on the barricade? Can you imagine the oligarch who's long three months and the minus 20 turning the dead people and uh, delivered it to the, to the, the cops? In, uh, the helping the injured people and fighting against the government. Is it your understanding of oligarch? In that case, I'm an oligarch. However he wants to describe himself, he's in pole position to run the country, giving his key ring worry beads a workout and networking around the clock. The new unity government was supposed to be formed today. That's why they're all here. But it was not to be. There's been an outbreak of squabbles. So in character, and yet so in contrast with the ideals and oils on the frescoes. Vitaly Klitschko, the heavyweight champion, a veteran of the boxing ring, but also a novice of the political arena, is upset that his new punch party is clearly lacking some and hasn't been given enough cabinet posts. He did, however, confirm today that he was running for president. Meanwhile, Yulia Timoshenko, the former prime minister and political prisoner, is maneuvering behind the scenes. She wasn't here today, but this supporter of hers was weighed down with expectations. The EU's envoys have returned en masse. Their limos bear good wishes and presumably bags of money. But how much and for how much painful reform? No one knows yet. Ukraine needs $35 billion, far more than the EU was prepared to offer last time round. But this revolution was fought in part in Europe's name. Having dithered on the sidelines, Europe now owes these people. Never has its flag had such a primetime outing, flapping with so much passion. It's been a bad week for Russia. The Ukrainian revolution has felt like a closing ceremony of Russian influence here in its former Soviet fiefdom. Of course, they don't build statues like that anymore. That one was put here courtesy of the Soviet Union. But in a way, the history of Ukraine in the last few months has been a desperate struggle by part of the country to finally escape from the long shadow cast by Mother Russia. Well, it looks as if they've achieved their goal. Mother Russia is pouting, but at the moment she's not prepared to do much else. Well, it's been quite a week. It started with the cityscape behind me in flames. It has ended uh, in a much calmer way. Of course, there are many outstanding issues. President, ex-president Yanukovych is still missing. They still have to find him. The economy is still teetering on the abyss and they still have to form a new government. However, I think everyone in the square down there and indeed in the rest of the country feels that they have made some sort of history. Back to you, John and Catherine. Our coverage in Ukraine tonight, Matt Fry in Kiev. Lindsay Hilson in Sevastopol, Cathy. And we're here.